TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are not live. But you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Um, right above me, if we do go live and you happen to miss it, this is the, the uh, twitch.com. Um, just go there, put in this username that's sitting right next to me. And, you know, you can replay the lives. Don't forget, we do got merch. And we do got Patreon. For those of you who follow on Patreon, I am locked out of my Patreon account. It's disappointing. I got a new phone number and I'm not able to access the two-step two, two, two step authentication. So I got to wait for support to do whatever they got to do. So it's going to be a couple days. I'm still recording for it. So y'all going to get a bunch of videos at once, but... Nevertheless, man, can't pay. We'll take it away. Season four, episode four. Let's get into it. <coughs> Across Britain, 4.8 million people receive some form of housing benefit to help pay their rent. But since 2013, 46% of renters affected by the benefits cap have fallen into arrears more often. A renter scap across England and Wales over 42,000 households received from rental properties last year. Okay. Trying to evict somebody right out from that? Paul Bowhill and Ben Pinner are High Court enforcement agents. They travel around the southeast, repossessing homes, chasing debts, and seizing goods when debtors can't or won't pay. You're going to go right down St Anne's Road where the pub is. See, I'm, I'm quite familiar with these northern parts. They're on their way to Finsbury Park, North London, to evict tenant Kareen Green, who's been in rent arrears for almost a year. I don't know why, I've got a bad feeling about this one. Do you mate. feel it in your waters? I do. We're looking for Salisbury Mansion. He got a bad feeling, it's gonna go up. You know what I'm saying? Normally he can trust his intuition, he's been doing this so long. So part of behind that laguna, yeah. mind the tree. I'm glad I've got you with me. Right. Kareen has received notice for the eviction from the county court, but the case has now been escalated to the High Court, and the agents are here today to evict her without warning. Are all of y'all doors like colored like this? Mine is just white. Number is it? 55. 55. Oh, okay. Who is it? The High Court enforcement have a repossession order for your flat. Hi, my name's Ben. I call enforcement. Madam, okay. Okay. inside and I'm okay. a vulnerable person. Okay, will you help. let me come in talk to you? No, you can pass me the possession order. That's the writ of possession. Thank you very much. I've got the other possession order from the court. The county yeah. court. And I've also spoken to the council. Yeah. And I've also contacted the landlord and his company. And I have bipolar disorder. Do not make me get upset. Okay, madam, I understand. <laughs> my bad. I'm sorry, that was funny. It wasn't funny, but it was like the way she's like rapping it, like he's just like gonna get a walk away from it all. Like it's, that's not how it works. The agents have the right to. They're gonna call the police. Force entry, but the team are now aware of Kareen's vulnerability. She is a vulnerable person now, but like it's just how she said it was crazy to me. I've no obligation to let you go. I'm afraid you do, madam. No, actually, I don't. Okay, can I explain the situation yeah, right explain, here, right now? Explain. We are from the High Court. That's fine. We are here to execute this writ today. That's fine, also. You have one hour from now to pack a bag and to take your writ that I've given you down to the council. Babe, the police are at my door. We're not the police, madam. Kareen calls her boyfriend for help. The door's halfway open because this idiot has got his foot in the door. There's people outside my door. Don't tell me to chill. There's people outside. I suggest you call a solicitor because I'm getting really pissed off. If there are clear visible signs of mental health, it does make it a little more tricky. We did. Yeah, nah. Y'all got to call for backup or something. Just need to try and comfort and reassure them and really try and support them in an emotional way because it's a very distressing situation, especially 
because you're giving them back. Okay, listen, I get mental health, but this is bi she has bipolar disorder. I know people with bipolar disorder. This is not how it works, I feel. Like, maybe not in all the situations, maybe, but like, I think she's weaponized it right now a little bit, just a tad. I could be wrong. Bad news. We want to try and calm the situation and help them through it. Madam, I'm not here to make things difficult. Well, clearly you are. I'm not. No, clearly you are. I'm only trying well, to. Well, clearly talk to you. you're here to make things difficult. I've sent the details to my landlord. I've also spoken to the council who have a specific date for me to be out of the property, which the landlord has agreed in email. In you're not listening though. Writing. Right? And I've already explained Calm to down. you. No, I will not. You don't know, yeah, what I've had to deal with with this order possession. Yeah, you keep laughing because it's funny. I'm not finding to you. it funny, man. Corrine claims she agreed a date with her landlord to move out. Despite the shock of today's visit, Paul and Ben are duty bound to enforce the eviction. They need to remain calm and help her understand the situation. Madam. It's past you. She's gonna need somebody from her side to come do it. Hopefully her boyfriend on the way there, he can explain it. Calm down. Tell him to <coughs> fucking calm down. Have you got someone outside your door with their foot wedged in your door, chatting all kinds of shit? Say yeah? nothing. You're clearly trying Jeez, to upset me and off. make this situation worse than it needs to be. You're trying to push your way through my door, right? Without knowing my part of the situation. Flipping disgusting. Been here five years and two months. Had I been a terrible tenant, I would understand. If we find somebody who is clearly distressed and may be suffering from mental health issues, we would be very sympathetic. We would listen to them. And a simple technique is that we wait until they've talked it out of their system and then we'll come forward with yeah, constructive suggestions on how we would like to deal with it. Now, Kareen calls her father. Dad, I'm not in a very good place right now. I have the police officers... High Court the high... Pardon? We're High Court Enforcement. We're okay, not police. High Court Enforcement at my door. Basically, yeah. Telling me I've got an hour to come out of the property when certain circumstances have already been agreed. Would you like to see those, Mr High Court Officer? Absolutely. We... OK, brilliant. If you, if you would like to talk to me, we're not harassing you. Yeah, but you've got your foot wedged in my fucking door. Because you're going to shut the door on me. You say you're a vulnerable person. Could you could you explain? I have bipolar disorder, right? Oh, we've made progress. I can't hold this much longer. I'm losing blood fiber. Paul steps in to hold the door open, but it's been barricaded from the inside. Madam. Listen, let me tell you something. If you push me through this I fucking door please. today, hmm? yeah? If explain. you dare push me through this door today, you're gonna have a problem. Madam, we just wanna talk. Don't you dare force your way through this door. Can you tell your colleague to move the hands yes. from the door? You can come no. in. He won't come in, he oh. won't let me come in on my own. Oh. Let us both in. I'm calling the police. Yeah. yeah. Concerned about Kareen's well-being. You gotta call the police because you know, her father's gonna come back her 100% right or wrong. Ben asks the police for assistance. He hopes that their presence will calm the situation down. Hi, I'm a High Court Enforcement Officer. We're yes. executing a writ of possession. The tenants are very irate, just screaming and shouting at the top of their voice. Uh, I'd say mental health, basically. So we'd need a union, not within the hour either. We've got um, a High Court writ, so we could force the door down, theoretically. We're on their way, OK? They're taking the mick. He agreed he will not Send the High Court or the bailiffs. So he's an asshole. What started as a straightforward possession no? has turned into a volatile situation, which the agents must handle carefully. No Paul and Ben must use all their years of experience to keep this difficult eviction under control. At this point, in my mind, it's like, did you or did you not pay the rent? The landlord could tell you whatever he want to tell you, but you've been you did not pay the rent for eight months or however long. Oh. I'm already wound up there. I'm well wound up. High Court Enforcement Agents Paul Bowhill and Ben Pinner were in North London. What number is it? Oh, in North London, OK. They were executing an eviction notice on tenant Kareen Green, who'd been behind with her rent for almost a year. I have no obligation to 
obligation to let you go past the I'm afraid you do, madam. But it soon became clear this eviction needed careful handling. I have bipolar disorder, right? Concerned for Corrine's welfare, Ben called the police. The tenant, she's very irate. I'd say the mental health, basically. The police are on their way. I feel like this is a touchy subject for me to be commented on, but I have, like, one of my close friends has bipolar disorder, and I'm almost positive that this is just an, an angry person right here. Like, I'm not doubting the fact that she has it or doesn't have it, but I just think she just came to the door mad, and this is not a thing that has to do with it right now. But now Kareen's boyfriend, Troy, has arrived to help... Oh, man. Okay, Troy's coming to help. ...on the situation. Hello? What, come in, then. I'm coming, babe. Troy? Sit down for me a second. No, I'm not sitting down nowhere. This man is pushing She's his way into my door. fucking so door. Stop. Hold on, hold on a second. Right, so high court. Yeah. She has to leave. Fine, yeah. she needs to pack her stuff. Yeah. And then you're going to give her an opportunity to come, to come back, back and take us. I've been trying to explain that, but what well, you've got to understand. Hold on, sir. I must inform you that the police obviously are on their way. I understand. My colleagues obviously obviously holding the door, so please don't be alarmed Can by you that. Move from the door, please. No, not right this second. Oh, Paul can't move from the door apparently. He's not going to shut the door. I understand. I didn't totally. ask you to shut the door. I told you to move from Stop. pushing the door. One second. Let me get in, please. Let me get in. Let me get in. Stop. I'm not pushing the door against there's, you. Yeah, there's something behind the door, by the way. That's what you're pushing up against. All right. All right. Explain, Explain the situation. All right, hold on, hold on. Stop. Oh, what are you telling me to stop for? Don't tell me to me. stop. He's, he's I'm crazy. listening. The best ally we can have in a... I'm not even going to lie. I cannot date that. He's a good, strong man because I... I mm -mm. Conflict situation is where you lot of anger the there. family friend. They know the people involved. They will be sympathetic to them. And they, they act as a really good buffer zone between us and the people. They can explain things to them in their own time. Troy has managed to calm Kareen down. I said he can come in. I cannot come in on my own for health and safety. Well, it's our policy. Paul, come in, Paul can come in. Paul, we're going to both go in. After 20 minutes at the scared. flat, the agents finally gain entry. I'm not, I, that's fine. Do you know what? I'm honestly, I'm not a rude person. I'm not even an aggressive person. I'm not even an angry person. We don't know who's behind the door. You don't know what's the ins and outs, which Absolutely. is fine, and I understand All that. we get is this piece of paper with two names on it. We understand this is the worst situation in the world, but we want to try and make it as smooth as possible. All I need you to do now is pack a bag. Yeah. You okay. will then need to make arrangements to collect the rest of your items. OK, no problem. Corrine knew that her landlord wanted her out and has already started packing. How are we doing? Clothes are already half packed. I'm sorry if you took offence. Yeah, she might flip again at any moment. Didn't they? Be... It did take, see, that's what I'm saying, but it took her man to come through and the most off, helpful person in the world, given the chance. I 100% accept your apology. Thank you. I was very upset. Thank you. I was very upset at the time. No problem at all. Kareen had been on benefits, but started work as a teacher. I wonder if she's on meds. ...assistant a year ago. She was still entitled to some housing benefit. But Corrine claims that the council consistently miscalculated her entitlement and underpaid the landlord. Despite her attempts to resolve the situation, the shortfall was never cleared. Now, after 12 months of being in arrears, her landlord has had enough. An interesting selection of books. Ah, yes, I do. Yeah. I work with special needs. Her situation is like, if that's the truth, her situation is kind of like bogus. So I do understand her anger and frustration, but like, dang. And, and back to my comments about mental health, you know, bipolar, it can show its face in many, many different ways. I just never seen it like, like, like that, you know what I'm saying? Like, I seen somebody flip the switch, like, mid-conversation with, like, that, starting off like that, and then flipping back. Wow. That is absolutely wow. spot on. Yeah. See, I'm a nice person. See what my students need for me? Being bipolar, though, does it, how does it affect you? Bipolar can do anything from leave you in a deep depression to manic episodes. Right. Um, 
you, you're more likely to get yourself in bad places, be around the wrong types of people. It just depends on the person and their surroundings. That's a fact. A That's few minutes later, plans, the yeah. police arrive. But fortunately, Paul no longer needs their help. We just wanted to call a halt. He was going the wrong way. Okay, and she called you. You're happy and... She's changed her work hours. The benefits yeah. were stopped. The rents got into arrears. The landlord just said, enough. Right. And he's issued the eviction order. Okay. Thank you very Bye. much. Bye. <coughs> Corrine's hour to pack up her essentials and leave it might is nearly back up. on. Gotta be careful. No documents will be left in this property. None. <laughs> Because if I can't find my stuff, then the council want to tell me, oh, but you don't have this paper, oh, you don't have that paper. Oh, we can't help you. Anything that I've handed in, I make sure I make copies of everything. As you walk in, do they all get up and walk out? Yeah, they pretty much do. Uh, it's even worse when I'm having a bipolar episode because I'm determined to get everything done. Well, they don't actually see the sharp end like this. Yeah. The council say, please don't panic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to take two months before yeah, yeah. the bailiff gets to you. But what they should then say is, unless the landlord takes this to the High Court, yeah. in which case it could happen overnight. Exactly. And then when people come in there with an attitude, they get upset and they don't give me an attitude, you must leave the office, blah, blah, blah. But um, Can I actually say this as a compliment? You yeah. do attitude to perfection. You're yeah, an absolute no. diva. <laughs> Spot on. <laughs> Kareen is... really was. He had me in a whirlpool. I didn't know what was going on. ...determined to make the move for her young daughter as smooth as possible. But there's one family member who's not cooperating. Still haven't found the cat. Rosie. My daughter named my cat after my mum. Oh. My mum wasn't impressed. <laughs> but the next cat we have, we'll call it Ben. Oh, I think that's a compliment. <laughs> Let's push this one. Told you, got her? Cat chase. She's not just going in the bathroom. He's got her. The cat is in the bag. We're ready to go. Kareen and her daughter are now homeless. <coughs> Let's go. Excuse me. Yeah. I have no idea where I'm going to stay. I don't know where the house is going to be. What is her boyfriend going to do? I just boyfriend know that going? I'm a vulnerable person who has bipolar and a six year old mm. child. I know that much. They're definitely going to place you somewhere. Don't even worry about it. Mm. It will be up within the hour to the local council to find emergency accommodation for Kareen and her daughter tonight. <laughs> Personal debt is continuing to rise nationwide. It currently stands at nearly one and a half trillion pounds. But over half of all people in relationships don't know how much debt their partners are in. 1.9 million married couples in the UK keep their finances hidden from their partner. Secrets are not a good thing in a relationship. 7 a.m. High Court Seven enforcement money. agents Brian O'Shaughnessy and Delroy Anglin are in Sutton, Surrey, with a writ to recover nearly £2,000. We're going to say Mr. Robert Grotowitz. He owes money to Marcin Stefaniak, £1,902.59 in the first instance. Might just be a personal debt. So, really, it's moved very swiftly on this one. The debt was originally an £800 unpaid county court judgment. But now, with enforcement costs and legal fees, it has more than doubled. Round the corner now, chap. Left is a lot. What's that, 17, that <laughs> If Mr. Grotchevitz can't or won't pay, the agents have the authority to seize goods to the value. Say, take it away. Value of the debt. You got your badge? Yeah. Charlie Anders, huh? Straight away, Dell has his eye on an asset. Oh, open already. Have a look. You don't say. <laughs> this is just like people in the UK just leave keys open. Like, imagine coming to the door and somebody's opened your car already without even having a conversation. Like, this would infuriate me. Like, no key. I, if he comes to the door and he's mad because of this, I'd, I'd understand. Hello. How are you? Is Robert here? How are you, Robert? My name's Brian. I'm a High Court Enforcement agent. I'm here with a High Court writ. Thank you, sir. Oh. 
cool now. Do you want to put some clothes on? Do you want to get a t-shirt or some clothes on? We'll wait for you. Yeah. Robert, uh, you're Robert, yeah? Is that you, yeah? Okay, Mr. Martin and Stephanie took you to court. We've got that standard balance of £1,902.59. pence. We're here to collect it. Do you know who he is? No. You don't know who he is at all? No. Isn't that odd? No idea <laughs> at all? No, no. Oh, okay. It's not uncommon for debtors to claim they don't know the claimant because they don't want to pay it. But um, I don't believe a word of it. We've done this job a long time. We're pretty good judges of characters. Call it intuition and call it experience. Call it what you like. But we just get the knack. We know when people are lying to us. Robert claims he doesn't owe anything, but the High Court writ said... Bro, don't want to put no clothes on or nothing? He out here in the Speedo is crazy. A Speedo is ridiculous. As otherwise... Well, he knows you and he knows where you live. You know about this debt, don't you? So we're not here because we want to be here. We've been, we're here because we've been sent here, yeah? Because you owe money. I don't care. Well, I do. I'll tell you what you do. It's £1,902 at the moment, right? If you carry on like this, wasting time, it's going to go up. How much? £1,902. One thousand say £100. I thought you didn't know. Well, you didn't know about it. It appears Robert is aware of the debt, after all. So you know how much the original amount was? So tell me who... No, I don't know. I don't know what's so he's, he knows exactly why we're here. Yeah, yeah. The jig is up, buddy. I don't like being lied to. I can't trust anything you say. If I can't trust anything you say, I can't believe you. Which means you need to find the money to pay this in full. Robert's wife comes downstairs to find out what's going on. Robert is still denying any knowledge of the debt, so Dell turns up the pressure. As you're walking about, you might be able to think of someone can help you out. It's early now, it's 7 o'clock. If you can't pay it, give money today, okay. but I need some time. The bill might go up by 8 o'clock. Why? Because we're not here to spend all day. But I'm... Make some calls and we'll see how you get on, yeah? I suggest you put some clothes on, sir. Let's have a look around. Please. Robert starts trying to raise some funds, but the agents aren't taking any chances and draw up an inventory of goods they can seize. They got some flat screen TVs in there. To offset the debt. This includes the cars on the driveway. Two cars. One should cover it, though. It's only $1,100, $1,200. The vehicle's outside. Are they yours? Yeah, no. Van. I want to see logbooks for both the cars. I think both cars might be in his name. That's why I asked for logbooks. Yeah. <laughs> Going to a debtor's house, the most expensive asset a person would normally have is, the car. is a vehicle. It's got no finance. You've got something to target him with, really. Only five minutes, right? OK, that's so fine. Months, Thank you very much. The threat of losing his possessions has prompted Robert to try and raise some funds. Can your work help you? Sorry? Can your work I'm help you? Oh, OK, OK. What would you do? OK. A colleague has agreed to help him out. Yeah, I I don't Was he transferred that into your account, has he? Yes. OK. So what we need is 902 <coughs> 58 pence now. The agents won't accept Robert's £1,000 offer. He needs to raise the full amount. The full amount? And his wife wants answers. Since when they don't accept a £1,000? Nothing. 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 The most common thing I find, particularly if there's couples, is that one may not know of the debt. And that leads to an issue between them in terms of trust and how their relationship is. We've got strange men in her house saying that her partner owes money and she knows nothing about it. 15 minutes after denying all knowledge of the debt, Robert has found most of the money. One seven. One seven. I've got one seven right now. Yeah, I better take that. 200 pounds. I know. I know. Okay, so what we do is take the one seven, and you pay me by one o'clock. The rest, yeah. At least one o'clock. That's fine. 
Liverpool card, please. Top. 1700 yeah? Even though Robert has agreed to pay, he still says he knows nothing about the debt. I mean, he knows everything. You, but no. I didn't know this person. Robert, I told you £1,902. That's the only figure I gave you. Then you told me it was 800 and something. And I never told you that figure. You say in front of my door we need to collect 900 That ain't no, what I he didn't. said. It's on camera. OK, we'll bet to differ. I'm a good person, I think. Absolutely, you are. And I'm a responsible father. I want to save my family. The good person, terrible liar. The high court so you can dispute it. Robert has paid £1,700. But if he doesn't pay the remaining £200 by one o'clock, the agents will be back to seize goods. You know exactly what it's told him, like, 902 yeah. quid, and he went, oh, it was only 800 something, so I was like, yeah. boom, you know exactly what it's What's happened is he hasn't told his wife. Yeah. And he's had to start <laughs> it out a little bit. That's what's happened there. That's good gossip at work. <laughs> he'll say whatever he needs to in front of his wife. Otherwise, he wouldn't be agreeing to pay the rest of the money. Maybe, you know, there's so many ins and outs in the building game, you know, they get contractors daily, don't they? So, you know... Right. I'm a granddad again. Oh, wow. You know, that's that's on a, yeah. I better... He's a... Yeah. Well, crack a smile, Bob. Crack a smile. <laughs> there you go. I better find out what his name is. Brian. <laughs> God forbid. Brian. God forbid. Call him Brian. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like a Brian. That's Brian and Dell have got the result they wrong. needed. Talking about Brian. But on their next case. I yeah. said two o'clock. Two o'clock. No, no, don't, don't like that. Don't, 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 don't. Don't wake your finger. Right, right. An angry father and son put them in a volatile. Ow. Forgot. Y'all got it. Y'all tweaking. We don't watch those. Let's just get to it. Cash flow is a growing problem for UK companies. 85% of small and medium-sized businesses are currently affected by late payment of invoices, with an average of nearly £32,000 owed to each firm. High Court Enforcement Agents Brian O'Shaughnessy and Delroy Anglin this day in episode, Northampton. Huh? to recover a debt of nearly £3,000 owed to an insurance company. What we got next, Del? We are going to Empire Cars. What that sounds like is a car company tried to uh, scam an insurance company, and the insurance company was not having it, and they've lost that battle. Hold on. Edit that out because I am the best editor on the platform. Y'all know that. We don't even gotta discuss that no more. On the Grafton Street Industrial Estate. Empire Cars is a taxi firm, and the owner, Mr. Tarib Ali, has already paid half the debt. What road do we want? We want Cornway. You know, so pay the rest. Mr. Ali agreed to pay the balance within two weeks. We want Office One over there. But he didn't stick to the agreement. How are you gonna make these people come back like they this not time, gonna pull up? There won't be any second chances. Morning, gentlemen. Empire Cars. Okay, I'm a high court enforcement agent. Come to collect the rest of the monies that you owe. They know who we are. To speak to. You've got now. All right. Next mm. week. No. That's your opening gambit. This is my opening gambit. If you're not going to pay. Now, I will remove your things. Let's get negative. Okay, so what do what, you want to do? What's the balance now? It's £2,950.22. Do you incur further costs, unfortunately? Because you didn't pay when you were supposed to, did you? Because the defendant has defaulted, the debt has risen by nearly £1,000. Now, Brian and Dell need payment in full today. Interest. But first, they need to establish who is the debtor. I'll pay it. I said I have to pay next two months for the two payments. For all finished. I'm paying you already half, right? That was a month ago. Oh, oh hang on. OK, who, who's, who's the boss? Who's in charge? Whose company is it? It's your name, please. Ali. Mr. Tarib Ali is the debtor, and he seems unwilling to cooperate with the agents. This is the dodgy thing. Are you going to pay it? Oh, if it's the dairy coming, 
But I'm not hoping your daughter I will be fighting. Not dirty. You owe money. Mr. Ali's son, Rahman, claims that an arrangement was made with the agent's office to delay payment. All the ladies from one of the phone is her client was uh, willing to accept payments. We can make the payment in October. The family claim that the agent's visit is a mistake. Yes. Yeah. Did you say that? That's what you said? That's why he ah, So you're thinking that they've asked us to come because yeah. they've messed up? Oh. Yeah. If the other two officers is come, then I will fight it. Would you? Yes. <laughs> because I'm big naughty melon before. If, if there's been a mess up, yeah. I Who's he talking about? But Brian is suspicious. Dale, give me two minutes. Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah. Can I pick your brains on the case? Okay. Brian calls the office to find out whether their claims about an agreement to pay later are true. HCW 2513. Is there any arrangement on the system? I spoke to this data because the balance was due at the end of September. I tried to clear it over two or three months. Uh -huh. I said, well, you know, that wasn't really the agreement. It started falling and shouting and saying he was going to go to the claimant and make them allow him to have more time. Okay. And I advised him at that point that Threatening our clients is unacceptable. OK, thank you, bye. It's clear that Mr Ali did not have an agreement to defer the second payment. Yeah, here come Big Brian. You know how Brian get. You lied. You're trying to intimidate us. Now I'm here. I'm going to sit on you. I'm going to sit on you until we get it. Simple. That is not right. Stuart came here on the third, took half the payment on the basis that you pay the balance at the end of September. It's all recorded, yeah? That is, in this job, will always be deceitful, difficult, throw walls up in front of you. When I know someone's lying to me, they've set the tone, as far as I'm concerned. Despite Mr Ali and his son's protests, they must pay £2,900 today. If they don't, the agents will seize goods. And they have the money. I know they got the money. Like, why are we even going through this? To offset the debt. You know what this piece of paper says? I am commanded to seize in execution your goods. That's the High Court telling me that. Mm -hmm. So if you don't want to pay it, that's fine. You can have that, sir. Let me give it to you. Wait, 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 I'll wait, give it to you. I'll give it to you. Wait, 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 wait. I will give it to you. Take it. Take this. Here. Have it. Thank you. If you're not paying, mate, just tell me so I can call the van. But then, right. Mr. Ali's son, Rahman, makes another unexpected claim. Originally, this debt here is not even belong to Empire. Nothing to do with me. Let's cut this short. You were given enough time to get this set aside. Rahman says that his father has passed the company to him and that he paid off the first half of the debt, even though he didn't feel responsible for it. If you're not liable for it, what have you done about it since? I just couldn't be bothered to go through okay. the passive and getting my money back, right? Okay. You couldn't be bothered to do it. Yeah, I couldn't be bothered. To, okay. I couldn't be bothered to Let's hold it there. In Let's hold it there. To get my 2000 Let's hold it there. Back. Mr. Ali might have passed the cab company to Rahman, but the writ still allows the agents to chase the business for payment. You please, you give me another week time. The reason I need it paid today mm. and now mm. is because he couldn't be bothered to do anything about it. You just put another fucking 900 pound on top of mm -hmm. that shit. Because you failed to no, keep your end of the... You nothing. know what, bruv, it's very easy. I'll tell, tell you what, I'll tell you what you do, I'll tell you what you do. Long story short, sir. Yes. Get do me a favour, get yeah. me the balance of this money, OK? Well, now? Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. How? Yeah. I don't know. We don't get involved no, in no, disputes, no, 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 no. right? Don't, uh, like, don't, no, don't talk like that. Don't, 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 don't. Don't wag your finger. Why, why? I'm being very polite with you. <laughs> Throwing the arms about screaming and shouting. It's not going to phase me. No, it just makes me dig in a little bit harder that I won't suffer that sort of nonsense. I've never seen him turn up his, um, like, I get, like, angry. He's always been the voice of reason, right? Not today. We're not going to be bullied. Let's get negative. You're going to pay. After 20 minutes of arguing about the debt, <coughs> Dell's patience has run out. Well, unplug. That's cool, bro. We're going to remove, bro. Right in the office? With no sign of payment, the agent's only option is to seize goods. I'm not here to play. I'm here to do my job. Keep your money, bro. Get out of sight. What? What? Back, get out of your sight. Who are you speaking to? I didn't say get out of my sight. You did say that. Get out of my sight. No, while I'm here, it isn't, is it? Then suddenly, Rahman changes his stance. Two o'clock, your full balance clip. Two o'clock. How are you going to make that payment? Doesn't what do you mean? Matter, Sorry. Like hard cash, whatever. What okay, do you mean, so doesn't matter? I don't like point. you being rude, bro. I did it two o'clock. Two o'clock. Shall I speak to you the way you speak to me? Wait and take a seat. This is now ten past one, yeah? Del, I'm happy with two, yeah? No, we'll we, we stay here, it's no problem. Thank you. 
The taxi firm has under an hour to come up. So he said he followed just chill gig it. With the money. If they don't, the agents will start taking assets. We're not here to be shouted at or disrespected in any way. We've tried to talk to them, just lay out the facts. You've got to remember there's five or six of them in there. Yeah, and they want to raise their voice and maybe... It's five or six of them that have no formal training of fighting. They... I don't believe that... I believe that y'all can whoop them. And their authority, but they, they're not... Negatively as well. They're not in charge, we are. While they wait, Dell starts making a list of assets they can seize if the two o'clock <laughs> deadline hey, is Dale, missed. Hey, Dale, wow, he's sitting in the seat. the wrong there. people, man. It's not us. It's not a nice job, is it? Well, let's put it this way. If a man owed you money, do you want him and me to go and get it? Or do you want someone who's going to go out and say, well, we'll accept five pound a week, please? Would you? You want your money? Exactly. So that's my seat. Is it? Since you are so nicely. As two o'clock approaches, Mr. Ali still tries to strike a deal. You good? How much I want to pay now? It's gone beyond that. It's gone beyond that now. It yeah, has, yeah. Come on. It's, it's all got to be done now. When dealing with debts involving families, family pride does get in the way because there's, there's someone's taking responsibility for the family um, and ultimately will take responsibility for making sure the debt's paid. With Who's minutes this? to go before the deadline, Rahman's cousin and sister arrive to pay off the debt. So 700 is cleared. There's two thousand two hundred and fifty pounds twenty-two pence. Thank you for helping, both of you. Dell, no way, bro. Look, I get it, but how y'all gonna get paid back now? Its tactics have paid off. The debt has been collected in full. All paid. All done. I'll call the credit card. It's nice to see the case the other bit paid, a little frustration. But at the end of the day, he's defaulted the arrangement given. You know, a bit more transparency, it'll be probably dealt with a lot easier and quicker. Yeah. But hey-ho, it's done. And yeah, we'll move on to the next one. And that's how life is, man. However you go into a situation, you need to understand that that's normally the same energy that's gonna be that you're going to be met with. So if you come in with negative and aggressive energy, you're probably going to be met with the same energy. Like, nobody's going to lay down for anybody out here. That's not real. Especially in the business world. In Britain, the number of households so, renting the in the private sector Definitely. has increased by over 3 million <coughs> since 2001. But 11,000 families in England and Wales were evicted by private landlords in the first three months of last year. Oh, excuse me. Steve Pinner and Ru Pabari are High Court enforcement agents. Today they're in Portsmouth to repossess a property. I've driven 100 miles today to get here. Stop raining. Got a new man on the duty. The tenants what have lived this? in the property for two years, but the landlord told them five months ago that she was selling up and wanted them out. All being well, should be, hopefully, relatively straightforward. Never go straightforward. Yeah, I know. That's the problem, isn't it? To speed up the eviction, the landlord has fast-tracked the case to the High Court. It looks like on the paperwork that uh, there's going to be a locksmith. Yeah. It's just a straightforward writ of possession that they won't know anything about. But as always, they just pull up over here. But the locksmith is already at the property. Hi there, morning. Hi there, your locksmith. Nice to meet you. They're, uh... Just kicking off on one. Uh, I arrived and basically they uh, they don't know nothing about it. Well, they don't. That's why nobody should have gone there till we got there. Difficult when you get to a job and somebody's already been there and told them that you're on your way. It's bad enough just opening the door and them seeing you, but they're expecting you now, so they're like ready for you. Yeah. So you're they on got the back all foot. The animosity to start. now. The tenant Victoria Mansa and her partner Shane knew their landlord wanted them out, but they didn't know it it's would big... happen so soon. OK, so you are... I'm not going to lie, there's a big sign that says sold on the door, like, get out. Oh. Like, I get it. Like, is the lease up? Like... Victoria. OK, Victoria. We're High Court Enforcement Agents. Yeah, yeah. Nice yeah. Going through here, please. Yes, sir. Thank you. 
This is a rip from the High Court. Oh, we're not getting towed out today. Obviously, I've got a. Yes, you are. Okay. I'll go and tell well, Why are you having okay. a letter, though? I respect what you're doing. I'm not going to stop you. I'm not going to be Good. an arsehole with you like that, right? Glad about that. But we've been told. We that was told. No, let me speak. We was told we would get a letter, a time and a day, okay. so we can get our stuff out prior to you coming. Okay. We would have done that, and we would have just gone. There you go. There's the keys. Okay. Right. Let now, me... this has not happened. Okay. Now, I... where are we going to go now? I'm a bit livid, right? Okay. Cancel. They told me that obviously it will take at least another week for you to come out. They've misled you. Yeah. Yeah. Bottom line, I'm sorry. Would you give us enough truth. time to get all our stuff out on the street then? What we do is get you an hour to get your personal effects together. Things you'll need for a few days. See, I've got my relative stuff in here. And then you can make an arrangement. Well, my landlord's not going to do that. She has to. She won't do that. She has to. You don't know my landlord. It's yeah, clear that the lot. landlord's decision to fast-track the eviction has come as a shock to the couple. I don't trust my landlord one what, bit. I'm sorry. What, it's not I understand that. It's upsetting. I understand that. Yeah, I get that. Sure. What you... It's not that volatile, this situation, low-key. need to do is you need to get everybody up, dressed and ready, yeah. take this letter yeah. and the children with you down to the council. You've got to change the locks, so yeah. we'll let you get on. As long the as family got kids, had already got started to pack their belongings. This is out of order. A one-year-old and a five-year-old, right? And they should be seeing this. This is wrong. The tenants are legally entitled to return to the property at a later date to collect their possessions. Dang, they want everything. They just trying to get everything out on the street. Why do that? Do you have a van? Do you have somewhere to put this stuff? But Shane decides to empty the entire house. So there's not a lot we can do other than just wait for him to empty the house and lock it up. I'm gonna kick off in a minute if don't get out of fucking way. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, he cussing her out. Tenants say to us that it's the landlord's fault. That's why we're in this position. And I try and explain to them that, you know. It's it... not, though, really, if you think about it. I'm not taking the landlord's side, but it ain't the landlord's fault. You have more than enough time. It has been through the court. The court has decided in the landlord's favour and they have to leave. It's an unfortunate situation. We're yeah, yeah, definitely. It's unfortunate. Asking them to leave what, to what's considered their home. The family's possessions are piling up on the paper. a lot of y'all, man, like, a lot of y'all that be watching the show, y'all be getting mad at me that I'm taking their side. I'm not taking their side. I'm on the side of business. You know what I'm saying? Like, put yourself in a landlord's shoes. If you warned these people six months ago, Hey, I'm selling the property for three hundred thousand. You got three thousand three hundred k sitting there, pending, and you have to wait on the finalization of that money getting your account until these people move out. Get out! <laughs> Whatever I got to do to get you out at that point, you're gone for three hundred k. You're gone. Especially if I've given you six months. I gave you six months. I gave you five months. I gave you time. Now you're there five months after. You could have been gone. I've, I've sat. I've tried to be patient with you. I try to work. I get go, get out. Oh, you have... you're not gonna stop almost a half a million dollars from hitting my account. Get out. Flipping that bubble. It's raining. This is not even my gear. It's gonna be ruined. I don't know how many times I told him that she has to let him back in to collect his stuff. But if you can't reason with someone, you can't reason with someone. Half hour or so. They move. Seeing all her belongings on the street is taking its toll on Victoria. I hope you haven't put That's all your clean. clothes in here. You need to get changed into something. Really fast about getting changed right now. <laughs> Shit. The family has managed to get most of their possessions out of the house. And I know I'm speaking from a point of like, oh, just go find an apartment. But I know it's difficult for some people. But like, y'all had the date of when it was going to be sold. I'm pretty sure the lease was over on that date or earlier. Y'all stayed six, seven months past that date. Like, there was more than enough time. And then I had to. Get, then they took you to court about it. It's over. You refused to leave, and I had to take you to court. Now what? 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 Where? Where? And what? And where do you expect me to be a sensible human being after that? I had to go waste money to go to court. Go 
going on? But then, Victoria's mum arrives. Now it's getting worse. What is going on? They told you that they didn't serve. They okay. Us. Okay. Fuck it, I don't believe it. Hang on, Mum, don't go off your nuts. Right, is that it? Is that everything out of the house? Yeah, everything. Oh, right, so now what? Going to try and get it so much sooner. Exactly, where's the van? Where's the storage? Right, that's all right. Yeah, I don't shit. Tensions are rising. But then a friend of the landlord also arrives. This is not going to get any better. I must put the keys up for that. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay, brilliant. In fact, I think I'm glad he keeps the house. Little friends come down to the house out. Yeah, we'll tell her to go fuck herself. How about that? That's the landlord's husband, I swear down. Oh, do you no. No, he's here to collect the keys. Sounds a bit cheeky. Oh, Right, you know what I mean? Did you pay the rent or give me the keys? Don't start this week. Give me the keys. Hey, 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 hey. I've been asked to come over and get keys, and that's it. Come here and get fucking keys, then you fucking prick. Something, right? oh, With emotions running high, will Steve and Rue be able to stop this volatile... Or will we be getting negative? <laughs> Find out soon. ...tile eviction from spiralling out of control. Let's just get negative. You know what I'm saying? Let's get negative for the one time. Ah, wait a minute. The landlord little friend pulling up, they, she sent him on purpose because he knew he was going to stand on business. High Court enforcement agents Steve and Rue were in Portsmouth to evict a family from their home. This is out of order and I've got two kids there, I've got a one-year-old and a five-year-old and they should be seeing this. Steve gave the tenants an hour to collect their personal items. We'll kick off in a minute, don't get out of my fucking way. All right, all right. But with trust between the landlord and tenants completely broken down, Shane and Victoria decided to empty the whole house. I don't know how many times I told him that she has to let him back in to collect his stuff. What is going on? When Vic Mom pulled up angry. It's just, it's not getting any better. Victoria's mum arrived. It's getting more and more negative, and this is what I want to see. This is what we're here for. I don't believe it. The situation became heated. It's all right. Yeah, I can see. And the arrival of a friend of the landlord's saw tempers reach boiling. I ain't gonna lie, if I was him and I seen him pull up like this. And the arrival like this, this would have irritated me too. Like, why is your jacket buttoned up all the way to your chin? You know what I'm saying? Like that would have blew me. Well, of a friend of the landlord's saw tempers reach boiling point. I've been asked to come over and get keys and that's it. You ain't gonna talk to me and you got three zippers hanging off your chin. Like, come on, bro. You get a fucking keys there, you fucking prick. I'll go to something, right? Oh, whatever. Now Steve needs to use all his years of experience to keep the eviction on track. You don't need it. You definitely don't need it. It's all died down. Yeah, that's always the best thing. Yeah. Give it an hour. Well, I don't know how long they're going to take to get the colour bands out. Yeah. Comes another couple now. They're coming to have a go. Get in your car and have a nice day. All, this all the best. Enjoy. Take care. Enjoy. All the best. But just as Steve manages to defuse one that? situation, Shane's mother arrives. Oh, oh man. I'm going to get another earache. This is none of your fault, Vic. What's all that? None of your fault. She claims the council have refused the family's request to be rehoused. Cap. Maybe, maybe, but now they ain't got no choice. Despite Shane telling them his landlord was going to evict them. Where's the council amongst all this? Yeah. This is not her fault. Well, the council are right, baby. See to everybody else. The council sees everybody else who comes into this country, but they don't see to my own son. The council see to everybody else. They help everybody else that comes into this country, but when it comes to their own, there's lived here, born here, born in Bloody Olinda Street, in Portsmouth, all the families here, and they don't even know. From what I've heard from all the comments, she has, she's not wrong. It's, it's, that's what y'all be saying in the comments. Y'all say the exact same thing. This is ridiculous. Look at it. All the possessions. The council knew that they would be they, that needed help, but they haven't been able to do nothing. They People help kept coming from everywhere, morning. shouting and having a pop. But you just have to be aware of everybody around you. You know where you are and how safe you are. Keep your head on a swivel. Inevitably, nine times out of ten, they do tend to calm down. 
because you have a calm approach. News of the eviction has attracted the attention of the whole street. Man, dirty washing. That's embarrassing. I don't know what you can do with this. Well, I'm going to have to wait now for the <coughs> van and take it to a storage unit. With no disrespect to you, like we don't know you, we don't know the agent, landlord, or whoever it is. Nah. We just get our instructions and get an address. Yeah. So that, that leaves us totally impartial. Despite the protests, the family has emptied the entire house. In an hour, that's crazy. We need to clear this pathway. But they did have everything What can we do? We need to get a van. I need more than a van. Do y'all call a van? Like, uh, uh, like, cause a van is a van in America. But like, are y'all, when they say van, are they referring to like the lorry, the, lorry, the small one? You know, like U-Haul. Y'all don't got U-Haul out there, do y'all? The moving so companies you that you renovate? I think we're done. Can I just have a look? Yeah, have a look come, yeah, come. Yeah. Or a truck. Because I've got to go around and shut all the windows, lock the doors, so forth and so on. What is it? Uh, you can't do that. They're fixed. <laughs> I was amazed at the speed they actually emptied the house. Because I know how long it would take me to empty a property of my own. Nah, yeah, they did that pretty fast. Try and move. I can't figure out how they property's in good shape too did it so quickly you just want to get it done and done dusted mm. i've gotten a bit of a <laughs> brain fix to get everything out <laughs> i'm not gonna lie that's how i would be too like let's just get everything mm. okay i'm just gonna lock up upstairs once upon a time this house was really lovely and decorated this is what i'm on about i used to pay i spent some money in this house i've even decorated upstairs I've decorated my boys' room. I've decorated the front room, the hallway, everything. To make it look nice. I just can't believe it's happened now. I didn't expect this one bit. Well, Y'all can come back and get them couches and beds. Two bedroom terrace house is all out in front on the pavement. Uh, okay, well, I'm actually gonna lock the door. The eviction is now complete. I wish you good luck. I'm gonna take it to storage now right. anyway, so. Good luck. Shane, Victoria and their children are now homeless. It will be up to the council to find them emergency accommodation for the night. They got it out of here though. Eight weeks after. Robert paid the remaining 200, okay, figure. He did not contest the debt, no, he knew what was up. What happened to the other people? Oh, they paid in the full. All right. Tell Lily like, comment, subscribe. Go on.